Pearson on their own as far as objects and pictures and the comments that were made by peers on this post only. Now, that was, uh, they didn't include uh, what you posted on somebody else's like, pictures and stuff like that, only what you all posted. And basically, they will like, uh, you can link with scripted statistics and intercorrelations between variables. So they look at the like, positive effects, negative effects, uh, somatic complaints, eliciting supports like that. So basically, positive effect, uh, it was something positive that you posted or you share something like that. So like the example says right there, like you posted, so you think you can dance finale tonight and like a smiley face. And like negative effect, uh, you basically the opposite. Like it's like says, it will be like, uh, made it all the way home before realizing I left my kiss in class. FML. I think everybody knows what FML means. I found it very funny in the article. <laughs> With this being an empirical article, I found it very funny that in the footnotes, it, it, it told you what FML meant. Yeah, <laughs> need to. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, somatic complaints are physical, like, uh, complaints that you have, like headaches, stomach aches, ex exhaustion. It's that. Okay, that. And uh, listening support, uh, they based it only you were actually asking for help. They said, like, you only posted, like, I'm having a terrible day. I didn't actually, you didn't actually like, ask him for help. You got to actually put like, I'm having a terrible day, I could really use a boost from someone. Like you explicitly were asking for help, mm -hmm. so, like they based it on. Mm -hmm. And offering support uh, is when you actually give like help to somebody else. It can be financial, academic help, uh, relationship advice, or you simply provide encouragement to a friend or someone, or a peer or something like that. And that comes by the peers. And actually had a chart. They divided like all of them, like all the effects that I say right now. It's like male and female separated. And you can see like all the variables and all the like the samples they got from it. It's funny because I saw this one, sexual talk, and I didn't actually explain it in the article. So I was kinda like sure what they meant by that. I don't know what they meant by it. But they included it in the chart, my line, the article itself. Okay, so I have the background leading to the study. There's two ways to see this. Basically, the first way is Facebook communication causing these symptoms. So as we know, Facebook is one of the largest like social networking sites. Um, who in here has Facebook like right now? Or have Facebook in past? Like nearly everyone. So um, it says nearly 75% of teenagers between the ages of 13 and 17 have this site. So um, this is the site where most of their peers are at already. Um, Facebook depression can be caused by other students, I mean not students, teenagers, sorry. Teenagers um, going on other profiles, looking at other profiles, like say like a girl looking at another girl that skinny, has beautiful makeup, and they compare it to their life and they kind of feel like negative about themselves. And um, teenagers using Facebook this way, um, are associated with loneliness, poor social adjustment, and uh, eventually depression. The second way to view this is um, the other way around, the, these symptoms causing the Facebook communication. So teenagers will go on Facebook and basically use it as a platform to discuss these negative topics like school, like how Ponce was saying, like F FML, and like school sucks, and stuff like that. And this, um, like if their peers respond to this, um, kind of give them like attention, they'll probably still, like these depressed, uh, these symptoms will grow over time because they're getting attention from it. Um, uh, furthermore, this research was necessary to find the connect between these symptoms and Facebook. Um, this next section, we briefly discussed the results and findings of the study. Really, this section is really all about the numbers. Um, so, uh, I think I'll just read it to you. I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but there's there's, there's not much more from, uh, other than just the data itself. So, um, the number of posts per, 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 um, per participant ranged from zero posts over the course of the two months and 784, which, as a side note, I think that's quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, Maybe it's just me. I, I can't imagine posting 
84 times on a social media platform. I mean, is your life that interesting? But I digress. But with that being said, the average post uh, per participant was 60.18. So I don't understand how you can have a fraction of a post. But again, I digress. Um, uh, on average, girls tend to post it, uh, tend to post more over the time frame. Um, so the female participants, um, on average, posted 88.25 um, posts versus the male average, which was 37.41. Um, girls also were uh, found to post more positive effect in their peers and received, and received more in return. Um, what that means is that they're more apt to put, like Ponce was saying, um, things like, oh, uh, Dancing with the Stars finale is on tonight, you know, big smiley face and a thousand exclamation points afterwards. And they were also more inclined to, re to receive um, some sort of feedback from, from their friends um, based on that. Um, and what that could, well, I don't want to get too much into that. Um, girls were also likely to, um, to include positive effects and less likely to include negative effects. So that, that means that they were more likely to post, quote unquote, happier posts on social media platforms than they would, than they would be to post negative effects. Um, uh, in specific, girls with elevated internalized symptoms showed higher inclination to include somatic complaints, requests for support, and posts containing negative effects. Again, to me, that's a no-brainer. If you've already been pre, if you've already been diagnosed or been diagnosed with a, a predisposition to internalize symptoms such as depression and anxiety and so on and so forth. It, it's not exactly rocket science to think that you're going to be uh, looking for help from, from your peer group, even if it is through a mediated source. So to me, that, that's, that part just makes sense. Um, for our conclusions, um, pretty much it, it takes the, the raw data that I just share with you. And so what, is, what does this mean in the grand scheme of things? For girls, internalization symptoms were, in fact, a positive predictor of Facebook communication content. So that means, for, at least for girls, there's a direct correlation between um, how this person is in regards to their mental health and the sort of things that they post and comment on on social media. Um, however, like I said, this was not the case for, for boys. Um, this may be, and this, I should have put this in quotation marks, this is actually from the text that says, this may be explained by efforts to conform to gender norms. Boys also did not receive the responses from their peers. So really, for uh, when you compare male versus female, boy versus girl, it's, it's a stark con contrast between the two. Girls received, posted more and received more in return, but uh, their male counterparts did not. And that can, like it says, it could be a result of, of certain gender norms, uh, gender categories that we try to uh, put people into. Um, however, I found this very interesting, but to me, again, it's a no-brainer. Likes and comments may have been seen as reinforcer for behaviors. So all of us know classical and operant conditioning. Um, so Facebook and, and likes and comments on posts can be seen as, as that conditioning factor to, to reinforce behavior, whether it be positive or negative. And, but, and it varied um, depending on the extent of personal emotional disclosure. Um, there's some things, that actually in the, in, the, in the journal that the APA released that this article is in, the, the article just before it actually was, was what sort of things do adults and teenagers viewed to be as appropriate to make use of, of social of social media and that was that was actually where the the sex talk was you know it's like what do, what do what do things what do people find appropriate for to be posted on social media um, and however this is this this shows that um, it can be taken two ways um, we can either if someone is not diagnosed with a mental disorder such as anxiety or depression, if something all of a sudden out of the blue they're posting these things like FML, you know, what it fill in the blanks, and some really negative things that could be an indicator to to their peers or to their or to their parents or to their uh, <coughs> maybe friends with them on social media that hey, this person may need help, and that could actually pre uh, prevent suicide and other harmful behaviors. This the other thing is as. Since since it is um, likes or comments can be seen as a, a reinforcer or conditioning factor in uh, the operating or classical conditioning process, it could be extremely harmful to the therapeutic process for someone that does have these internalized symptoms to have such uh, easy access. That sounds really bad, but such access to to social media because it could reinforce an already negative behavior. Okay.
Okay, and um, I have the last point, the Christian viewpoint. Basically, I took that as me being a Christian, how can I uh, tell these teenagers, how can I help them? Um, the first, first, I want to say the Bible warns against comparing ourselves to others in 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. Um, if they take this into consideration, it will probably prevent like these symptoms from forming. Um, next, the scripture also warns us about spending our time doing worthless things in Psalms 119 and 37. So basically all this time on social media, just looking for hours and hours. Um, I also challenge them to like spend as much time at, in the Bible as they do in social media. That will probably cut it in half from right there. And then the final verse. Um, Proverbs 12 and 25 it says, an anxious heart weighs one down, but one but a good word cheers them up. So, any questions? Do you ever want to impress somebody like when you're doing a presentation?